So are we going to go with the acid flow on this one? Probs not. Um, again, as with other examples, we're in the use after free section, so perhaps it would be best to start from looking around at. So I've got the full code here where I told you to start at OHCI R3 service TD. So that's servicing one of those transfer descriptors. And if we look at the sort of code that I gave you as the hint code, uh, we can search for instances of free. Let's make sure it's not case sensitive and so forth. So we've got a V USB IR or root hub uh, free URB. URB is a USB request descriptor. Uh, look around, some more free URB. Uh, more free are you free URBs. So it looks like whatever our use after free is, it probably has to do with freeing URBs. So this code should have given you a little easier way to you know move around in the indirect control flow. But I'm going to move to the full code and we're going to you know go through this a little bit. So the core vulnerability here, you know, just to state it up front, the core vulnerability is that there is a premature free caused by a logic bug. So there's a logic bug that causes double freeing of a location and that subsequently reduces a reference count, which is one of our words of power, reduces the reference count to zero, which leads to a premature freeing of some data that shouldn't have been freed and which will subsequently be used elsewhere. So first let's find the logic bug that leads to the double free. Uh, then I'll provide some clarity on the nature of the double free, then we'll go hunting for the reference count stuff, which makes that's the part that's a little harder to confirm what exactly is going on. All right, so in this code, uh, it's, you know, it's servicing transport descriptors. So basically it's like there, it's, you know, OHCI, it's ring three, service a transport descriptor. So there's something that came in that said, okay, we've got a transport descriptor, sorry, transfer descriptor. Again, they, they tricked me again. It's not transport descriptor, transfer descriptor. We got a transfer descriptor that basically says, you know, here's some data that needs to be processed. This is the code outside of the VM in the virtual host controller. And so it needs to process this packet of data. So it's, you know, going to read the transfer uh, descriptor. It's going to initialize some buffer. Uh, keep moving on. Uninteresting. We've got the allocation of a new URB. And we saw that all the freeing has to do with URBs. So perhaps we want to keep an eye on this URB that's going to be freed later on. So take a look at that. Moving down through here, we can see that there is eventually this free URB right there. But before that, it gets passed into a variety of functions. So we've got some initialization here. That's good. Uh, we've got, you know, mem copy zeroing out some stuff. We've got uh, checking some bytes of data. We've got sanity checks. We've got that being paranoid to, to sanity check and throw this away if it doesn't look like it's good. Uh, we've got reading some physical memory to, you know, fill in some information about this URB. But if you spent the time looking at this, the bug itself happens because inside of this function, the submit URB, if it gets into there and then it has an error, it's going to free the URB. And then once it comes back and there's an error and it's, this is not equal to success, then it will fall down to this path and it will free the URB again. So let's just first confirm this sort of double freeing situation. And to do that, we go into here to the definition, we go to here to the definition, then we have trouble finding the definition from there. So we have to hunt for, you know, all possible assignments to that function pointer. And here is our assignment to the function pointer, which means it's actually this function. So this is the actual submit URB function. And so within here, there are, you know, various paths, but the path of interest is that when one of these submits fails, it's going to have an error code here. The error code is going to say, is this a failure? Yes, this is a failure. Okay, go here and now free the URB. And then furthermore, that failure will propagate through as the return value, and then that will cause the failure in the enclosing function. So let's, you know, we've got the free here. Let's go see, you know, what these frees look like. Once again, we've got uh, you know, some very indirect control flow here. So I'm going to find all references to that first. And then I want to look for some sort of assignment to this function pointer. So I'm looking for, you know, an equal sign somewhere here. Someone's assigning, assigning. Oh, not there, not there. Keep on hunting. Oh, here we go. We've got some 
uh, assignments, but those probably don't look right. We've got, that's a video port API, it doesn't seem right. So we really want some USB-ish assignments. So driver, net, tap, UDP, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now we are into USB section and we've got this assignment right here. So this is going to be the actual function that's called when you're freeing. And if we get into here, then we start to actually see one of our words of power. We see a release function. So that release is saying that it's going to return a new reference count and it is going to do a atomic decrement on a reference count that exists here. And again, yep, it says reference counter. So that is one of our things that we're very suspicious of. These reference counter situations, you know, they can be caused by race conditions that lead to them prematurely getting lowered to zero and then something getting freed. But in this case, it's a logic bug rather than a race condition. So this dev release this virtual usb device release because the virtual usb device struct has a reference count inside of it this release will get called upon free so inside of this free right going back inside of the free that we found through the indirect control flow release gets called release and you know you can also see that there's like a pool free but this is ultimately going to just do things like appending the memory into like a free list so it's really this release, like the, the retain release sort of situation with reference counting, which once again bites someone. So it's specifically on the USB device. This PDEV, PDEV is the pointer to virtual USB device coming out of the URB. And so this release will lead to a free the first time that it's called here in the submit URB. Oh, wrong. Go back. So... The first call to free is in the submit URB. So it calls that, that calls release. It decrements the reference counter by one. And, you know, again, the part that's hard to confirm is, you know, I'll tell you, I'll assert right now that the reference counter would be two at this point. So it, it'll decrement it by one. It'll go from two down to one. And what's supposed to happen is it shouldn't go down to zero until you get to like detaching virtual, uh, virtual USB hubs and stuff like that at shutdown. But because this first free occurs inside the submit, and then back where the submit is called, once that errors out, we get the return code. That's going to be an error code. It's going to say if RT success, and it's going to fail because that's an error code now, not a success. So it's not going to return true. It's going to fall through to here, and then it's going to call this free. And that, once again, is our sort of indirect control flow, which ultimately leads us to here and leads us to here and again we will once we will release it a second time and now at this point this will decrement it to zero so c refs will be zero and so it says if c refs is equal to zero now it's going to actually destroy the virtual usb device and so at this point this is a premature free like that virtual usb device is still going to be used but now it's going to actually be freed and that will be what leads to the use after free so as I said, it's kind of hard to see the actual confirmation of, you know, my assertion of, well, the, the references would start out at two and then it would go down to one and then it would go down to zero and that's where the error occurs. Uh, you know, I don't know a good way to find that in this code other than to search for all instances of the C refs that's used in this atomic decrement. And so that should occur in a decrement for release and an increment right here for retain. And where else is it used? Well, it's only used two other places. So it's used in the virtual USB root hub construct. So that presumably is creating this, you know, virtual USB root hub. And then it's also used in virtual USB dev init. So anytime there's sort of this creation of a virtual USB device, there's going to be initialization. The initialization is going to set the C refs equal to one. And so Basically, we would, you know, have to follow all the control flow. We would know that, okay, it's always initialized to one. We would have to follow all the control flow that leads up to our double freeing situation or, you know, obviously have it in the debugger. That would be the easier version. And we would have to see that, well, it started at one. It got incremented up to two by someone somewhere calling retain. And then the question is, you know, who, where calls retain? Well, only three options. Uh, find new de uh, find device by address. Uh, new URB or submit URB. Well, let's look at the submit URB first. 
that actually turns out to be on the control flow path we don't hit. Like we know we hit this path, so it never gets there. So, okay, that's not it. So that excludes that. Then we've got uh, new URB. Well, that sounds likely. Like we know that the creation of a URB happened right before, you know, we had this erroneous submission and subsequent double free. So, you know, we could try to backtrack this or go back and forward to it. But again, you know, the, the point here is if you were actually doing this, it's open source. You would use a debugger as the, you know, vulnerability finder did. And, you know, whether it started at two or even if it, you know, just started at one, uh, ultimately, you know, the crash would occur due to the incorrect double freeing if you cause it to take that control flow path. And, you know, subsequently you would go hunting around to say, okay, well, let me run through the debugger and find out where it's retained, where it's released, and how exactly we got ourselves into the situation. All right, so back to the slide. All right, so what was the fix for this? Well, basically the developers deleted this extra free that was occurring on that error path at the end of the OHCI R3 service TD. They did it there, but it turns out there's also a couple of other variants in things that sound very similar. We've got OHCI R3 service isochronous uh, TD and OHCI R3 service TD multiple. So similar pattern, like this is a perfect example of, you know, vulnerability variants because you've got the same sort of pattern copied and pasted between different functions that do similar but slightly different things. And therefore, you know, if they hadn't done a proper look through, then, you know, they would have patched one and then the attacker could come, come right back and, you know, exploit the same vulnerability in a different function. And then finally, just to say that, uh, you know, I had to go hunt down the actual specific commit that fixed this. And there was, you know, zero reference to the fact that it was fixing a CVA. So from that, we can take it that, you know, VirtualBox is not exactly open and transparent about when they're fixing vulnerabilities in their code.